In our latest interview, we go behind the scenes at Nestlé's York production facilities. We speak to Alison Stankiff about some of the major production challenges faced by the business ahead of the Christmas season and look ahead to 2022, which offers plenty of optimism for the business as it continues to expand its facilities and research and development into a wide range of new products that will be brought to market over the coming months and years ahead. The fact that St York itself has a, a special place in the company's history and heritage as far as Nestlé is concerned. And so can you tell us how rewarding have you found working with some of the most renowned brands within your role? Yeah, so, so you're right. I think, uh, you know, York has, uh, a, a, has a very strong heritage when it comes to chocolate. So um, it's the home of was the home of originally Round Trees. Uh, I think there were some other chocolate companies here, um, and with Joseph Roundtree, and it was actually the, the birthplace of Kit Kat. So you know York as a as a city, it's got some real strong um, chocolate credentials, uh, chocolate heritage. Sorry, um, and in terms of you know, I remember when I um, joined um, this, the company um, and I had my inductions, and I always remember a marketing manager saying to me, you know. It's all about the brands. So Nestle bought Brown Trees because of the strong brands. Um, so it's you know it's great to be part of the um, that, that you know to be to look after those brands, those well loved brands, so Milky Bar, York, Yero, Polo, and Kit Kat, and to and to be part of those 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 brands and and shape them for the future. So um, yeah, that's uh, it's very re rewarding yeah, it's and very clearly yeah. an integral part of the community there, which uh, was very evident for my visit. And as far as your own post is concerned. In the years that you've been involved with the company, how has it changed most in your view and what makes the brands that are part of the business special in your eyes? So yeah, so I mean in terms of how it's changed, I think um, as I said, I've been, been here over, over 30 years and I've seen, you know, a lot of investment being put into the, the factory. So, uh, you know, it is, like, as I say, the home of Kit Kat. We've got two fantastic Kit Kat lines of which you saw one. Um, you know, they, they turn out many, many Kit Kats. So yeah, I, th I think the changes has been you know, it's, it, we've seen the investment come into the factory and make it much more efficient, efficient operations, which is good. Um, and, and what makes the, the brand so special, you know, I think that we keep, one thing that we do is, is in my team, is we kind of uh, reinvent them. So we keep we keep them fresh and we keep them real. So we're always doing sort of uh, some, some NPD, you know, some ch changes to the brands to make them feel relevant to the, you know, the latest consumer. Uh, to attract new consumers to and to excite exciting new fans. So you know when you go into 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 to stores, you'll you'll see you know the, the competition doing new things, and, and equally we do new things to keep our brands refreshed. So it's it's great to have a team to work with a team who who do that, who innovate uh, and develop the new twists on the classic brand. So so for example, like this year, it's it's a bit of a funny year really because it seems to be that orange flavor seems to be the thing for the moment so we've launched um you know an orange um an orange yorkie um we've um you know um you think it's a bit you know not very exciting but you know we've had we've had um other launches um in the past which maybe not so proud of so for example there was a, a christmas pudding kit kat flavored put christmas kit kat we did one year and um something that never quite made it to the cut uh, we did have um, a baked bean flavour Kit Kat, but that never actually got launched, thankfully. Wow. Uh, Kit Kat itself, obviously, it's the home of Kit Kat in York since 1935. It's being produced there. So mm. I believe it's about a billion a year that roll off the production lines yep. there. So can you talk to us about some of the challenges of getting that many out there? Yeah, so, so I mean, if it, if it, obviously we need our lines to run, you know, to plan. So, you know, if we've committed to to, loan, to sell a number of Kit Kats to all our customers and to our consumers, and they need to be on the shelves. So I think I think the challenges are, um, you know, making sure that every bar's perfect, every bar counts, and getting that, in, and we have got that man mentality in the factory that, you know, it's the, the, as I say, every bar counts. Uh, we've got what we work with, good standards. So, the, the, you know, there's a lot of standards that they work towards to make sure that, um, you know, things run to plan. Uh, we don't have any any issues within the factory. So, you know, as I say, if we if we manage those standards and we've got the the, the uh, operators, you know, having that understanding that every bar counts, then yeah, if, if we if we find that we do we do deliver. Changes there from my visit there. You were talking about the fact that we've got well, we saw the fact that the, the two halls, the production halls there, in terms of physical transfer of things from the the wafer side of things on the oven side to the chocolate handling is that. Um, quite challenging on a logistical front, getting it from one section of the factory to, to the other? 
Yeah, it is, but you know, we've, we've been doing it for a long time, like you say, uh, and we need to make sure that our wafer, when it's delivered into the uh, the factories to make the Kit Kats, is, is fresh. Um, so again, it's quite a planning, quite a planning exercise to make sure that your wafer is used within, um, you know, it, it's, it's fresh life, which is, which is just like a, you know, a few days. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's really just a really good planning uh, and then execution of that plan. That's the key thing, really. And lovely. Just coming back to your own role there, do you have such a thing as a typical day and what would it look like if so? Well, um, probably not really. <laughs> and that's one of the things I like about my, my job is you don't really get the um, a typical day. You get a lot of variety in the job. So, for example, uh, this week, you know, I've been running trials in production, working with the engineers to, with some new installations to put some new products into the lines. And then another day you could be problem solving um, where you've got some issues on the plant, the plant. So, and then another day, you, you know, you could be talking to yourself and, and showing um, visitors around. So it's, it's really uh, not, a, there's no typical day, I think, in, in this role. Um, but um, yeah, it, that's what I like about it, the, the variety. And obviously, just reflecting on the times that we've been living through in, in the pandemic, it's been challenging for many manufacturers. Uh, so can you talk to us about the kind of measures that Nestle put in place to ensure that production lines are smooth running? Um, yeah. So I mean, it's um, yeah, it's it's not it's not been easy. So I mean, we've always adhered to strict hygiene rules within the factory. We have to. So uh, you saw yourself when you came round. We've got very strict um, rules of, of entry. Um, so we, we, you know, we've, we've we just built on that really, and put the we put some extra guidance in place for social distancing, um, with the um, you know limited number of people in rooms, um, and so we did a big you know order across our our site uh, um, our area, production areas sorry um and made sure that we had those control measures in place for the pandemic and and you know we've worked closely with them um, all the authorities as well uh they've they've been in and visited uh, just to check that you know we've got the controls in place uh and that's been able allowed us really to to reduce any risk of infection so really felt quite quite safe within the factory environment throughout the pandemic which is which is good Excellent. I'm glad to hear that's the case indeed, because it has been, as you say, a, a difficult period for us all, but we're getting through it as best we can. And, <laughs> yeah, um, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Hopefully uh, coming out of it uh, now. Uh, it's a very extensive site that you're based at, and it has uh, yeah, research and development uh, equipment oh, yes, yes. there. So can you talk to us about how that operates and how significant that is to the business? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's 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 really important, and it's great that we've got that building, uh, that global R and D centre in York, and just just next door. So we do tap into it a lot, um, as we as we're sort of neighbours. Um, I think Nestle is really committed to, to research and development, and looking at um, not just sort of new products, but also sustainability. Uh, looking at um, how we can do things better, um, you know, in the, the sort of health health agenda as well. So a lot of that, um, those um, the, the people at the PTC, we've got engineers, we've got product development, chocolatiers, entrepreneurs, scientists. Uh, they all um, are working on sort of the very uh, developing, you know, more sustainable packaging, um, more you know, NPD as well, um, and and they then feed that into the factory. So it's great having them next door because it's 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 a good you know uh, bonus for your factory. Um, and at the moment, it's a really strong program in R&D um, for, as I say, sustainability. And we've got that commitment for KitKat to become carbon neutral by 2025. So we've got a big team working on how we can do that from both a recipe, uh, a production and a packaging point of view. Um, and then there's all the piece around um, lowering our carbon, the, the carbon footprint of our manufacturing and also trying to move towards 100% renewable energy. So, so as the PTC uh, do new products, um, so developing new things, there's also a big, uh, a lot of scientists working on those aspects as well. So it's, yeah, brilliant having them next door and having them in York. So looking ahead to Christmas, we're coming up to the Christmas season soon, and obviously we've been having some supply chain issues in general across manufacturing, uh, but this is a particularly busy time of year for Christmas for all in the confectionery sector. So can you tell us about how Nestle approaches the festive season? Yeah, well, with with vigor. <laughs> so, so we, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it happens every year. You can't you can't avoid that. And uh, you know, we've got a good seasonal range of products. For for example, um, Quality Street. So, so every year, you know, we 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 need to get 
get the product on the shelves and make sure everybody nobody's disappointed by not being able to find what they want um it's been difficult through the pandemic um but we know we've kept going we've kept manufacturing and um i don't think um we've we've failed to to deliver what we need to i think um the, the problems that we're seeing now um are, are with the, uh, the the supply chain um issues but we know we've got a really strong team who are kind of on it every day uh dealing with issue after issue of you know if if, if raw materials or packaging looking like they're going to be a difficult supply that they're, they're on it they're, they're working with them that the, the suppliers and making sure that our hauliers um are, are, are getting the support they need to get those deliveries in time um we've actually increased our volumes by 30 percent in the last five years and um that's around um a thousand truckloads a day um being delivered right now now to ensure that that our products are available for Christmas, and I think um, I mean there's been some recent press about Quality Street, but um, you know I think what 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 we're saying and and we believe is that there's there's, there's no need to worry about the seasonal products uh, being available. For example, Quality Street, so they'll they'll be on our shelves um, for Christmas as, as normal. And, and 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 from a York factory point of view, we're keeping supplying the chocolate into a. Halifax um, and you know uh, to make sure that they can make their quality street and after rates.